The campaign of Modern Warfare 2 sees Task Force 141 face its greatest threat yet. A newly aligned menace with deep, not yet known connections. The operators from the task force return and new allies are formed in the globetrotting operation which includes operations in Europe, Asia and the Americas. With a lot happening, meeting a lot of characters and factions, it could be helpful to summarize it all into a timeline of Modern Warfare 2. So in this briefing we will go through each of the 17 campaign missions chronologically and see what factions and characters are involved as the story unfolds. Be aware, I'm diving in-depth into the story of the campaign, which means this video contains major spoilers. Consider yourself warned. The campaign opens on July 15th, 2022 with Operation Strike, a recon mission outside Al-Masra, the capital city of the United Republic of Adal, or simply Adal. It's bordered by Uzbekistan in the south and Russia in the north. Operation Strike is a joint operation between the CIA, Task Force 141 and Shadow Company. Lieutenant Simon Riley, callsign Ghost, is tasked to observe a meet between the Iranian Quds Force and Russian private military contractors and confirm the presence of General Gorbrani, the leader of the Quds Force. Upon confirmation, General Shefford gives the green light to eliminate General Gorbrani. Commander Philip Graves, the CEO of Shadow Company, proceeds to launch the ballistic missile and shortly after, the target was successfully destroyed. Less than a month later, on August 12th, Shefford conducted a black bag operation in Al Masra, called Operation Hindsight. Shadow Company was to deliver three ballistic missiles to allies in Adal, but it didn't go as planned. Due to a reconnaissance failure, the unit was ambushed by what later turned out to be Russian ultranationalist PMCs, who not only got possession of the missiles, but also of Shadow's comms. It was a disaster, so Shefford and Graves tried to bury it, which would keep it quiet for a while. Yet, it kickstarted a chain of events that would eventually lead to their downfall. Roughly two and a half months later, on October 28th, Shefford and Kate Laswell conducted Operation Kill or Capture in Al Masra. Ghost and Sergeant John Soap McTavish would lead two teams of Marsoc Marines to either capture or kill Quds Force Major Hassan Ziani, which was the second in command to Gorani. After Bravo team touched down, Alpha team got shot out of the sky, which in turn would give Ziani a chance to escape. However, the team would discover one of the three stolen ballistic missiles in a warehouse nearby. To discover how Al Qatala was moving the missiles, Task Force 141, specifically Captain John Price and Sergeant Kyle Gaz Garrick, carried out Operation Wetwork in Amsterdam, a covert operation to find out who Al Qatala's smuggling partner is. In the docks of my hometown, Price and Gaz eliminated Al Qatala and discovered Ziani used the Las Almas cartel to smuggle the missiles. Not even an hour later, Operation Tradecraft saw Price, Gas, and Laswell till an Alcatala cell to Café Gracht, where Alcatala and Las Almas operatives discussed their plans to smuggle Ziani out of Mexico. The trio managed to eliminate the guards and extract one of Alcatala's operatives for interrogation. After the interrogation, Laswell discovered Ziani would be smuggled over the US and Mexico border. Laswell contacted Colonel Alejandro Vargas, leader of the Los Vaqueros, the Mexican Special Forces. Operation Borderline was executed on October 29th by Vargas and his second-hand man, Sergeant Rodolfo Rudy Parra. Arriving just in time, the pair saw Ziani climb over the border wall and gave pursuit. After chasing Ziani and his cartel protection, he eventually managed to escape. The day after, October 30th, Operation Cartel Protection was conducted by Shefford and Laswell. Task Force 141 and Los Vaqueros would join ops to hunt down Ziani in Las Almas. As to not violate international rules of engagement, Shadow Company was on standby to support. Soap, Ghost, Fargas and the Los Vaqueros started their hunt in a small town near Las Almas. The tables would turn, however, when Ziani wasn't in the safe house and the Mexican army, on payroll of the cartel, would show up to hunt them down. As the team was chased down the mountain, they eventually were saved by air support from Shadow Company, and so the hunt for Ziani would continue. The hunt would continue the same day in Operation Close Air. 
Soap, Ghost and Vargas would execute the operation with air support from Shadow Company and Graves. The trio managed to capture Ziani and escorted him by truck only to be ambushed in a local village. After holding down a landing zone they were all extracted by helicopter. A few hours later Ziani was interrogated but the team couldn't hold him for long due to international laws. Fortunately Laswell managed to gather intel from his phone. Comms from Ziani's phone were tracked to a hatchery on the coast of Spain. Its strategic location has made it perfect for smuggling illegal cargo. October 31st, Price, Gas and Laswell would carry out a covert operation called Operation Recon by Fire. The objective? Clear the area of Alcatala and Las Almas, search the area for the missiles and destroy them. Price and Gas would clear the area and search the hatchery and lighthouse, but neither would prove to be good. The missiles weren't there, but the guidance systems were, alongside crates of Russian weapons, hinting even more towards their involvement in the war on terror. As Price and Gas searched the tunnels, Laswell, who was on Overwatch, got discovered and kidnapped by Alcatala as the team was unable to intervene. In response to Laswell's kidnapping, Price and Gaz would launch an off-the-books operation on November 1st. Operation Violence and Timing as it would be called saw them and Nikolai dig up an old alliance. Upon arriving in Urzikstan, the team would join up with Commander Farah Karim and the Urzikstani Liberation Force. Alcatala kept Laswell in a black truck at the front of the convoy which the team had to overtake and save Laswell before they reached the border to Adal. The operation was a success. A couple hours later, back in Las Almas, Soap, Ghost, Fargas and Grace decided to infiltrate Elsie Nombre's house with the intention to interrogate, since he or she was the only person, other than Ziani, to know where the two leftover missiles were headed. Operation Elsie Nombre, as it would be called, saw Soap and Vargas infiltrate the villa. After Soap got interrogated and convinced the cartel to talk to El Sinombre, the pair managed to find their way up to the third floor. Breaching and clearing the office, they managed to capture El Sinombre, otherwise known as Valeria Garza, a former operative of Los Vaqueros. The answers from Garza's interrogation appeared true, as November 2nd, Task Force 141 Los Vaqueros and Shadow Company followed her intel to an abandoned oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico. Conducted by Shepard and Laswell, the team launched Operation Dark Water to disarm and destroy the missile. The teams cleared the oil rig but could only find the rocket on board. The controls were aboard a cargo ship 500 meters to its north. After a rough boarding, the team maneuvered through shifting shipping containers to the control room of the ship and just about managed to change the directions of the missile to blow up the oil rig rather than its intended target. With a successful operation, the teams returned to Los Vaqueros' base in Las Almas on November 3rd. However, upon their return they find it taken over by Shadow Company. Unbeknownst to them, Task Force 141 was getting too close to discovering their cover-up. After a heated argument broke out, Graves and his mercenaries tried to kill Soap and Ghost, but both managed to escape. Fargas, however, was taken prisoner. Wounded and alone, Soap would have to find a way to survive as Graves' men were on a killing spree in Las Almas. Crafting useful items to survive from scraps, Soap managed to rendezvous at the town church with ghosts and the pair managed to escape to Fargas' safe house. The pair discovered Rudy was hiding inside and together created a plan to break Los Vaqueros out of jail. Only a couple hours after their reunion, the team started Operation Prison Break. Fargas and the rest of Los Vaqueros were held in an old maximum security prison, later taken over by the cartel and now by Shadow Company. Upon their arrival near the outside of the prison, they took out the border patrol and tower guards and ziplined up and over the prison walls. After taking control of the CCTV rooms, Soap guided Ghost using the prison's cameras, so Ghost was able to sabotage their vehicles without getting spotted. Proceeding with the mission, the team broke out Vargas and the Los Vagueros and fought their way out of the prison, where Price and Gas arrived unexpectedly and helped them over the walls. After a successful extraction, Price attempted a negotiation with Shepard, where he would call off Shadow Company, but it was futile. Shepard was on the run, but there were more pressing issues. 
Later that same day, Task Force 1 for 1 and Los Vaqueros would join Ops as Ghost Team to take back the Fuerzas Especiales headquarters and by extension their prisoner and kill Graves. The team split in two. Team 1, consisting of Price, Gas, Vargas and a pilot would get to the tarmac and commandeer a helicopter. Team 2, consisting of Soap, Ghost, Rudy and the other Las Vaqueros would wait for their entrance and move to the headquarters to neutralize Graves. After Team 1 commandeered the Hilo, Gas and Vargas snuck into one of the hangars and secured Garza. At the same time, Team 2 chased Graves out of the headquarters into the base's training area where Soap and Rudy presumably managed to scratch his name off the list. Immediately after the team took back the headquarters, Price, Ghost, Gas and Vargas interrogated Garza and found out that Ziani smuggled the third missile into the United States through the port of Chicago. And thus, Operation Countdown started on November 4th in Chicago. Task Force 1 for 1, alongside a squad of Marsoc Marines, headed towards a building in downtown Chicago. Ziani was believed to be holed up in a fortified server room alongside a battalion of Alcatala operatives. As Laswell would work to locate the missile, Ghost was on armed overwatch, gas and a team member of Marines would infiltrate the building from the ground level and work their way up as Price, Soap and another team of Marines would helo in and work their way to the middle in a pincer move. After rescuing the hostages from the floors above, Soap and Price rendezvoused on the 56th floor only to discover Ziani wasn't there and the missiles was in its first stage of launching. As the team moved towards Ziani's location, the missile was launched with its destination later discovered to be the Pentagon. As the ground and roof team met up to breach and clear the room Ziani was in, he and his guards made a dash for the elevators. As Soap chased down Ziani down the elevator shaft, he managed to grab the missile controls who was cornered with Ziani and his guards without a weapon. Soap managed to hide long enough to disarm the missile and eliminate the Alcatale guards after, but in doing so was shot in the back by Ziani. As he was dragged to the window, Ghost was able to line up a shot and shoot Ziani through the head. And that's where Modern Warfare 2's campaign and its timeline saw their conclusion. Yet, there are still many loose ends. First and foremost, General Shepard and by extension, Shadow Company. Although the CEO of this PMC is presumed dead, Graves mentioned Shadow Company had enough operators to take over the entire country of Mexico. It's unsure what Shepard's motivation is and how Shadow Company will tie into it, but this definitely isn't the last we've heard of them. Secondly, and similar to the previous one, the Iranian Quds Force lost Major Ziani and their revenge failed upon the ballistic missile's destruction. The Quds Force was backed by Al-Qatala and presumably their commander Khaled al-Assad who hasn't even appeared in the story. Alcatala's involvement will definitely take more of a leading role. With that, we can't forget Alcatala's smuggling partners, the Las Almas cartel and their leader, Garza, El Sin Nombre. At the time of the campaign, she was still in custody in Los Vaqueros base, but as she mentioned, I'll be free in 24 hours. Still, the largest threat might be the one that only had a supporting role in the current conflict private military contractors that ambushed Shadow Company and stole the ballistic missile, the Russian paramilitary, were ultra-nationalists under the command of none other than Vladimir Makarov. And this post credit scene shows they got something big planned. Beef, chicken or fish, gentlemen? Salads, please.
open ending to the campaign is no coincidence as its story will continue in Spec Ops, DMZ, Raids and to a lesser degree in multiplayer and Warzone 2.0.